the three little pigs are camping. Once upon a time, in the loveliest part of the forest, a mother pig and her three little baby pigs were living happily. One day, the little pig, Gurky, the middle piggy, Torky, and the oldest piggy, Porky, told their mother that they wanted to go camping. Mom, all our friends went on summer vacation. There's no one left to play with. If you let us, we want to camp by the lake. The mother pig could not turn down this request of her kids. This is a good idea, my kids. Of course you can camp. But be sure to choose the right place to camp and make sure your tents are solid, okay? <laughs> hooray, hooray, hooray! The next day, the piggies left for camp. After walking on the forest road for a while, a wolf with sharp teeth and angry eyes followed them. <laughs> Here is an amazing meal that will keep me fed tomorrow morning. <laughs> But the pig brothers didn't even notice the wolf following them. Gurky, Torky, and Porky finally arrived at the shore of the lake, and they found a nice place to camp there. First, the youngest piggy, Gurky, decided to make his tent near a tree. He quickly gathered up the large leaves to build his little tent. And before you could say Piggly Wiggly, he was done. The oldest piggy, Porky, came up to his youngest brother and took a look at his tent. Your tent is beautiful, Gurky, but do you think this tent is sturdy? Yeah, of course it is sturdy, my brother. <laughs> the middle piggy, Torky, decided to make his tent from reeds. To do this, he gathered the reeds on the ground and quickly connected them together and finished his tent faster than you could say Piggly Wiggly. But when the oldest piggy, Porky, came to his middle brother and saw the tent made of reeds, he warned his brother. Brother, your tent is beautiful, but will these reeds protect you from danger? Look, I chose the tallest reeds. My tent will never be damaged. Since the two little piggies finished their tents so quickly, they started to play and have fun, which may have been their reason for building tents so quickly. The scary-looking wolf carefully watched them secretly. While his little brothers played, Porky started to make his own tent out of thick tree branches. He worked a lot until almost evening, and when he was finished, he had a strong, secure tent that would protect him from dangers. Torky and Gurky were very impressed when they saw their brother's tent. Your tent is very nice, my brother, but you spent all that time working and didn't play with us. <laughs> when the evening came and the sun went down, the three little piggies decided to go to the carrot party in the forest. Of course, the sneaky wolf followed them. The three little pigs found a lot of rabbits at the party. And that makes sense, because it was a carrot party. Oh, it looks like such a fun party. I want to taste all the carrots. <laughs> the piggies mingled with the rabbits and had fun for hours. Have fun, piggies. Tomorrow, I too will have a lot of fun when I Feast on you. <laughs> As the party ended, the three pig brothers realized how tired they were and returned to their little campsite. And the big bad wolf waited for oh. them all night. Oh. Oh. Waking up on his second day in the camp, Gurky heard a voice from outside. Come out, you little piggy, or else, with just one blow, I will destroy your tent. My tent is very strong. You can't do anything. Okay, then. One, two, 
three. The wolf took a deep breath, so big, that he blew away all the leaves of the little piggy's tent, and it fell to pieces. Gurky barely escaped with his life, and immediately ran to his brother Torky's tent. Soon after, the wolf arrived in front of the reed tent made by the middle piggy. I know you're both in there. Come out, you little piggies, or else I will destroy your tent. My tent will never break down. Okay, then. One, two, three. Once again, the wolf took a deep breath so big that he blew away all the reeds of the piggy's reed tent and it fell to pieces. Gurky and Torky barely escaped with their lives. They immediately ran to their big brother Porky's tent. Brother, help us. The wolf destroyed our tents. And now he's coming here. Then we must take action immediately. Come with me. Working together, Porky, Torky, and Gurky dug a deep hole in front of the tent. Then they got out using the ladder in the pit, and they covered it with an earthen cloth. And then they entered the tent that Porky made of sturdy branches. They finished just in time because the hungry wolf came right over to Porky's tent. Come out, you little piggies, or else, with just one mighty blow, I will destroy your tent. Don't waste your time, bad wolf. You can't damage this tent. Let's see then. One, two, three. <gasps> The wolf blew with all his might, but nothing happened to the tent. The wolf came a step closer and blew again, but to no avail. The tent didn't even shake. The wolf took one step closer to the tent, and this time, no. He fell into the pit dug by the piggies. Seeing that the wolf had fallen, the piggies came out of the tent and crossed the edge of the pit in front of them. Then these lovely pig brothers quickly returned to their mother to tell her what had happened. Mom, you were right. We should have been more careful in the camp. First, we should check the environment before camping. And whatever happens, we should set up the tents firmly. <laughs> yes, yes. The mother pig hugged her children tightly as they returned home. And all throughout the summer break, they played with each other and had fun. Once upon a time, a wolf wandered. He was hungry all the time. He ate a lot, but he could never get enough to satisfy his stomach. I am hungry again. So, day and night, he would wander the forest, chasing prey. One day, the hungry wolf discovered a small hut. He sneaked up carefully and quietly. And when he got close, he looked out of the trees, saw that a mother goat and her seven babies lived in the hut. Oh, now there's a meal that'll last a whole week. <laughs> the crafty wolf laid in wait and spied the hut until the morning. In the morning, the mother goat was about to kiss her seven babies and leave the house. My children, I'm going to the market now to buy some food. Be careful and do not open the door to anyone. All, All right, right, mommy. mommy. <laughs> the mother goat left the house to go to the market. At that time, the wolf, sneakily watching the hut, called it an opportunity and jumped out. 
but he needed a genius idea to fool little goats. Hmm, the best tactic for catching these goats is a disguise. The wolf first put on an old dress. He pulled his ears down and made two goat horns from the branches and put them on his head. Then, with his feet covered in flour, he stole a fresh and warm apple pie from the house of someone he doesn't know. And I'll just change my voice, too, like that. I'm such a good grandmother. <laughs> the wolf walked slowly to the front of the hut and knocked on the door. Little goats, hearing the sound, immediately rushed to the door. One of them was going to open the door with excitement. But another little goat warned him. Wait! You shouldn't just open a door like that. You have to ask, who is it? Who is it? It's me, my babies, your grandmother. I came to take you to the park. Huh. Our grandmother lives very far away. You can't be her. Oh, it's been such a long trip. Come on, dears, open the door and let's go to the park. When the wolf said that, the little goats looked under the door and looked at the wolf's feet. Look, her feet are just like ours. Yes, but her nails are too long, like a wolf. When the little goats did not open the door again, the wolf made them smell the apple pie he brought them. Look, I brought your favorite apple pie, dear grandchildren. And wolves don't know how to bake pies. The goats smelled the apple pie and got excited and opened the door. None of them understood that he was a wolf in disguise. Come, Come on, on Grandma. Grandma. Let's go to the park. We'll eat we'll our eat apple, apple pie, pie when, when we, we return. return. The little goats and wolf left the hut. Mmm, I'm so hungry. I can hardly contain myself. While the goats were walking happily, the wolf's dress caught on the branch of a tree. The dress slipped off the wolf slowly, and the little goats were stunned by surprise when they saw the wolf's horrible fur. When the wolf realized he was spotted, his ears flipped up, his sharp teeth showed, and he jumped on the goats. He found and caught them all one by one. Only one of them survived, and he ran away from the wolf. The wolf kidnapped six little goats and took them to his dark nest. To inform his mother, the little goat that survived ran so fast that he lost his breath. Meanwhile, the mother goat returned home from the market with a basket of fruit and vegetables. The door of the house was wide open. She hurried inside, but couldn't see her tiny babies around. My babies? Where are you? Ah, my little goats! Ah. The mother goat was so worried that she immediately ran out of the house to start looking for her little kids. Meanwhile, she noticed the large footprints on the ground. Oh no, these tracks are the footprints of a wolf! She followed them for a while, but then the ground changed and the prince disappeared. What am I going to do now? Oh, ho, ho, ho. a wolf has kidnapped my children. Oh, ho, ho, ho. While the mother goat cried, the little goat that had escaped came running to her. Mom, mommy, my baby. Where are your brothers? What happened? Tell me quickly. 
a hungry wolf disguised himself as our goat grandmother and tried to kidnap us, Mother. Only I survived, but I know where they are. The mother goat and her little baby ran to the wolf's lair. When they arrived, they heard the voices of the little goats. <laughs> this is the wolf's lair. We have to be very careful now, baby. The mother goat and her kid came up with a clever plan to save the other little goats. They both stood in front of the wolf's house and made a huge bear shadow with their hands inward. Inside, the wolf was just about to eat the little goats, but saw the scary bear-shaped shadow. Oh, what is this? Is it a bear or...? I am a giant bear with a very hungry stomach. There must be a wolf around here that will fill my stomach. <laughs> oh, no. The wolf was so afraid that the bear would eat him that he immediately started to run out of his lair. No, help me, bear, 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 the bear will eat me, bear. Seeing the wolf running away, the little goats came out with joy and hugged their mother tightly. The wolf ran away! The wolf ran away! And from then on, the mother goat and her seven children lived a peaceful life away from the wolf in their hut in the forest. In the forest, there lived a little girl and her mother. Whenever the little girl left the house, she wore the red hooded cape her grandmother had knitted for her. This is why everyone used to call her Little Red Riding Hood. One New Year's Day, in the kitchen, whilst her mother was preparing for the evening, Little Red Riding Hood approached her mother. Mother, I'm so happy! It's the new year. Will Grandmother be joining us tonight? Grandma is ill, darling. Don't think she'll make it tonight. I was just making her some New Year's cookies. May I take the cookies to my grandmother? No, my darling. It's too cold. You stay home. I'll go and come back. And I will brew her some herbs so that she gets better as soon as possible. Please, Mother, please. You have a lot to do here. I'll go and come back before you know it. Okay. But dress warm, please. The little red riding hood wore her boots and red cape. She grabbed the basket her mother had prepared and left home. Do not leave the forest's path and please be home before dark. Okay, mother. It sure was cold out there. The whole forest was covered in snow. The little red riding hood was walking in the forest with joy. Deep in the forest lived a young hunter. He was after a wolf that would enter the homes of the villagers and steal their food. I never thought I would be spending New Year's Eve all by myself. But today I will catch you mighty bad wolf. And because of this everyone will enter the New Year much happier. Having put all the villagers in fear, the wolf was out in the forest for his prey. I hate snowy days. Can't find anything to eat. Meanwhile, Little Red Riding Hood was on her way. She noticed a baby gazelle in the woods. Poor gazelle was shivering from the cold. Poor baby gazelle, how cold you look. Little Red Riding Hood wanted to approach the gazelle and help out. But once the gazelle noticed her, it ran away. Hey, stop! Don't run away! I'm not going to hurt you! I only want to help! Little Red Riding Hood followed the gazelle into the forest. Even with its very slim figure, it was so fast. All of a sudden, it disappeared. Little Red Riding Hood continued going after the gazelle for some time, but then thought it was impossible to find it. She had a look around and noticed she was now far from the forest. 
She was somewhere she had never been before. The snow made it impossible for her to know where she was. She thought by following her footprints she could find her path. She followed the path, but in time the snow covered her trace. Right at that moment, Little Red Riding Hood felt helpless and began to cry. <laughs> what will I do now? Hello! Help! Help! Can anybody hear me? Hello! Somebody heard her all right, but it was no one other than the evil-hearted wolf. Hello! Is there anybody out there? The wolf went towards the voice he heard, and soon after saw Little Red Riding Hood. Without scaring her, he approached her. Seeing the wolf in front of her eyes, she was very scared and began to scream. Help! The wolf is here! Help! Somebody help! Psst! Don't yell! Don't yell! I'm not going to hurt you! I heard you calling out and I came to help! Little Red Riding Hood thought that he meant no harm. So she stopped yelling. Now tell me, what's a girl like you doing in the forest on her own? I was taking cookies to my ill grandmother, but now I'm lost. Oh, no human has ever lived here. And where does your ill grandmother live? Um... Little Red Riding Hood did not want to tell him where her grandmother lived, because she still had her doubts about the wolf. Um, I can't find Grandmother's house from here. If you take me back to the forest path, I could find it there. Okay, well, come on, follow me. In the end, the wolf walked and Little Red Riding Hood followed him towards the forest. But the evil wolf had a mighty plan waiting for her. Once we arrive at the forest path, this little girl will show me where her grandmother lives. That way, I can first eat her, then I can go and eat her grandmother. <laughs> now that's what I call a New Year's feast. After a short walk, the wolf and Little Red Riding Hood found the path. Yes, here we are. Now do you remember your grandmother's house? All Little Red Riding Hood wanted to do was to get rid of the wolf at once and hurry up and go to her grandmother. Thank you. I'll take it from here. Anyhow, it's not that far. It's the red house at the end of the forest. Right then, Little Red Riding Hood knew she had made a mistake, but it was now too late. Really? <laughs> The wolf opened his mouth, got closer to Little Red Riding Hood, but right at that moment, hearing a rifle, the wolf ran away in a panic. Little Red Riding Hood was relieved and quickly rushed to her grandmother's house. Meanwhile, the hunter was still after the wolf. He vaguely noticed his footprints on the snow. I know you're here. I'll find you. After an adventurous trip, at last, she made it to her grandmother's house. She knocked on the door, heard her grandmother's voice from inside. The door is open, my darling girl. You can't come in. Hearing her grandmother's voice, Little Red Riding Hood was a little surprised. This voice doesn't sound like grandmother's. It must sound like this because she's ill. Little Red Riding Hood opened the door and entered. All the curtains were closed. In the dark room was her grandmother in her bed with her blanket pulled up to her chest, just laying there. 
Thank you so much for coming, dear. Well, what did you bring me now? Mother baked amazing cookies. She told me you won't be joining us on New Year's Eve, so I thought I might come and see you. You did well, darling girl. Come closer so I can see you better. Little Red Riding Hood got closer to her grandmother's bed, but she had a bad feeling about this. Closer, my dear, a little closer. Little Red Riding Hood was now one step closer to her grandmother's bed. Her grandmother looked awkwardly different to her. Grandmother, what happened? Why are your ears so big? So that I can hear you better. And why are your eyes so big? So that I can see you better. What about your arms? Why are your arms so big? So that I can hug you better. Hmm, teeth? Why are your teeth so sharp? So that I can eat you better. Suddenly, the wolf jumped out of bed and threw himself onto Little Red Riding Hood. Come back here. You cannot run away from me. Little Red Riding Hood got out of the house and began to run away. But the very fast wolf was about to catch her. Just as he was about to jump over her and grab her, he noticed his foot was stuck. And suddenly he found himself hanging from a tree. When Little Red Riding Hood stopped and had a look, she saw that he had been caught in a trap and quickly went over to him. Tell me, you dirty wolf, where is my grandmother and what have you done to her? Tell me! He couldn't do anything, don't worry. Little Red Riding Hood noticed where the voice was coming from and noticed that the hunter was coming after the wolf. Your grandmother is okay, little girl. She is resting in my shack. When I heard your grandmother was ill, in order to protect her, I took her to my shack and I prepared a trap for the wolf. Fortunately, we caught him before he could do any harm to you. Bad wolf! First he broke and entered my grandmother's house. Then he dressed into her clothes and tried to trick me. But I knew there was something strange about this. Come on, let's go to your grandmother. And as for him, he can hang here throughout New Year's Eve. And I'll take care of him tomorrow. And so the hunter and Little Red Riding Hood headed towards the hunter's shack. The wolf yelled after them. Hey, stop! Don't leave me here all by myself! It was almost night time. Little Red Riding Hood, Grandmother and the Hunter arrived at Little Red Riding Hood's house. Her mother was waiting for her in front of their house. When she saw her daughter, she was very happy. My dear child, where have you been? Mother, it's you! Please tell me what happened. I will tell you everything, Mother, but first I must apologize. I didn't listen to you, and I left the path in the forest, and you wouldn't believe what happened. I will never ever disobey you again. Little Red Riding Hood, her mother, grandmother, and the hunter spent the evening together that night, eating, dancing their way into the new year. As for the wolf, this was the worst New Year's evening he had ever had.